All right, we're back. This is uh, video 25 of the Blue Nose build. Uh, I was hoping to put up a shorter video this week for you guys, but I'm sitting here looking at uh, what I just done, and it's over 40 minutes long. So the only way I know to cut these down a little bit is my face-to-face -face time with you. So, um, but it's it's hard to cut these videos down when they're when I'm only putting them up once a week now, and I got a lot to show you. So uh, instead of me sitting here talking and and doing things, let's get into it. I got a little show and tell first uh, because uh, usually I always get a question. Uh, what paints did I use? What the, what color was this? What color was that? And I know I showed some of this before, but I got it all together this time, and I'm going to show you every everything I've been using. So we'll get that out of the way. Uh, and then, like I said, I got a little show and tell, some other things I've been doing. And I did go over to a hobby store and get that stuff called Blacken It. And, uh, and I got a little short clip up of me using it for the first time, and I was not happy with the results. And then, uh, then I believe we'll get into the ship. So uh, let's get right with it because I'm going to try and cut this down just a little bit for you guys, but it's still going to be close to 40 minutes long. So I'm I'm sorry about that, but I just you know I feel I don't want to leave nothing out for you guys. So here we go. Let's get into it. All right. So here we are. First thing we're going to do is let's get all this paint and stuff out of the way because uh, I noticed when I built my Arizona I had a couple guys you know well what paint did you use for this what paint did you use for that well I you know during the videos I would show it but apparently they didn't watch all the videos and that the and the only thing they want to watch is the finished model and then they asked me well what did you use so anyway here we go now all of this stuff is is my preference it is what I chose to use some of this stuff I had laying around from other models and it, this is not this is not a Bible here of what you have to use and 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 things like that to each his own okay but this is what I used and I will have guys probably ask me what did you what color was that all right, we'll start with the uh, bottom of the ship. All right, this is a testers, and it is called Gloss Dark Red, and it is a number 1204. All right, that was the bottom of my ship, and I really like this red. Um, I know it's not right. They say it's supposed to be more of an oxide red or something like that, but I like that red. Uh, I used it on the um, Arizona, and I used it on this ship, and it's just, it's my preference. All right. Um, I should say, first of all, I primered everything on the, on the hull of the ship with this Model Masters gray primer, and it was a lacquer. Okay that was uh, my primer then I went to that red and then I had this black laying around and I talked about this before any black should do you know black is black you, 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 what can I say and I just use that and I know it says for plastic but you know you got primer on it and like I said before in, in the video where I showed this once you've got primer on there this paint doesn't know whether you're putting it on plastic or wood and I just had this laying around, so I used it. All right. Now, for the ship itself, some of the deck stuff. Um, basically, th this is a gloss black red. It is a Model Masters 28002. And basically, that was for some touch up, you know, on the side of the ship or on some of those little. Uh, rings that I had here and there or, or whatever I had to do where I had to touch up the gloss black and then I used a flat black on anything on the deck of the ship any metal that touched the deck of the ship I painted it a flat black 
and uh, I'll be showing you that later on, on the ship itself. But, you know, when I go to the hobby store, they got, I think they, the, the hobby store I go to has got uh, testers and model masters, which I believe is the same company. Model masters is just a little bit better brand than the testers. And they got Tamaya, and I believe they got that Hummel, if I'm saying the name right. So I just grab, you know, whatever I'm standing next to. But the flat black is a Tamaya XF1. Alright? And I don't know if that's a... Just says acrylic paint. Alright? I don't know what this uh, flat black is. If it's an enamel. No, it's a lacquer. The flat black is a lacquer. Alright. Then I had some silver some things I painted silver and you'll see some of that coming up once again it's a model masters just says silver that is a number four six seven eight and then all my white except for the stripe which is a pinstripe down the side of the ship but all the white up on the deck or wherever I did it in a flat white all right and once again, this is a Model Masters. This is an enamel. This one is. You know, enamel or lacquer, it doesn't matter. I think the enamel covers a little bit easier. Uh, this is a flat white. And boy, this has got a big number. FS37875. Model Masters flat white. Alright. Now the deck. Um, a polyurethane my deck a clear gloss it's a minwax and you can do your deck any way you want like I said I had some sample pieces laying around that I, I did different stains on and I went with this polyurethane and it says a clear gloss now I put like one and a half coats on it and I say one and a half because the first one I put on pretty pretty good and then the second one I came along and just lightly put another coat on it. And uh, you'll see the results I got. It's not overly shiny, but it's not dull either. So uh, that's what I used on my deck. And then when I get to my mast or any of the other wood that will be uh, clear, you know, be a, uh, it won't be stained or anything. Well, it will be stained. won't be painted. I'm going to probably use this, uh, and I say probably, because I did it on the bounty, and I like the results. This will probably be used on my mast. All right, it's a Minwax. It says Golden Oak 210B. All right. And like I said, I used this on the, uh, on the bounty on my mast and other parts of it, and it came out pretty nice. I like that. So I'll probably go with that on the mast on this ship. All right, so that's all my paints. Everything I use there. Uh, I'll show you on the ship. I went over to Hobby Lobby, and I'll show you where I, I use this at. I wanted to get some chain for the drive gear up on the wind lash, wind lash, and uh, I looked for the smallest thing I could find, something that looked similar to a bicycle chain, and this is about as close as I could come. And it looks pretty nice on there. So I was satisfied with it. So like I say, you can go over Hobby Lobby and you can find all kinds of chain. And uh, I think this, this one here was expensive. This was almost $10 for that section of chain. Uh, you go into the jewelry department and you can find a lot of little things for this ship. Uh, okay, here again. There's another thing. A little show and tell. I started on the little... Uh, dinghies for the ship. I still got a lot of work to do to them. Got to straighten this up, cut some of this back a little bit right in this area. Okay, so I've been working on these little dinghies, or one of them anyway. And now here's a here's a thing for you. I believe there's only two goes on the ship. All right, so there's one. This is what they gave me. I have enough here. 
There's two of them here. I have enough here to make eight dinghies. I got a small fleet of fishing ships here. So I don't know what that was all about. Why in the world did they give me enough of these to make eight? I don't get it. You know, they, they, they don't stack on top of each other on the ship. I only seen, from the photos I seen, uh, I only seen one on the ship from the way the photo was taken. But I'm sure there's one on each side. So uh, I don't know why I get eight of them. So I'm working on these, trying to get them caught up. And my turnbuckles. If you remember in the last video, I showed you uh, me working on my turnbuckles. And I said I was going to go with that one design. Well, I decided to go with also put together a turnbuckle uh, like they show you. So I'm going to have two different turnbuckles on there. I'll show you them in just a second. So what I did was I made a little jig. I just took two pieces of wood and glued them down on a, on a piece of this cardboard. And then I cut a little piece of that uh, strip brass that they gave you. I think I cut it three-eighths of an inch long. I believe that's right. And then I had some little one sixteenth inch brass tube. I went over there and got me some brass tubing instead of using that aluminum on my other type of turnbuckle I went and bought brass. I will show you that in a minute. That way I could solder this stuff together. So I took uh, two little pieces. Now there's you have to cut two of these and two of these. This I believe is about an eighth of an inch long and it's like I said it's a sixteenth inch piece of tubing and then I would take that and lay that in here lay the other one over here and then take one of these put on the side of it take the other one put on the other side of it take my little hooks put in either end and then solder it together and I'll show you what I came up with so I will have uh, both styles of turnbuckles on here all right so here they are okay I've been painting them silver all right so let me show you the two different styles let's see let's pick uh, let me find a nice one okay here's a halfway decent look on one right here and then one of my other type right here now I'll zoom in on this in a second for you but you can see the two different styles I got here so let me do that let me zoom in on this for you let me flip my little lens thing around too much back it out just a little bit there we go alright so there's my two little turnbuckles turn it sideways so you can see it you can see that showing up alright alright so I painted them silver and uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken, if I remember my count right, up on the bow of the ship, on the bow sprint, I believe there's four of these and two of these. So I need six turnbuckles all together. And I made quite a few of them and I picked the best ones out. Okay, so let me back out again. Alright. So, um, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, I got something I want to show you. I did get my other flag in. So I don't lose these. Let me move these. Let me get these out of the way here a minute. All right, I got my other flag in from over there in England. Uh, Modelflags.com, I believe it is. And uh, here's the proper flag 
for back at that era of time. All right. And uh, 75 millimeter, it says. Yep. And that's on cloth. That's a piece of cloth. And it's printed like this on both sides. If you've never used one of these, you have to trim it along the edge and then put like a, um, uh, I forget what they call it, it's seam sealer, stuff that they use in, uh, when they're doing sewing. Instead of sewing a stitch, you put this, it's almost like Elmer's glue. You put that along the edge, keeps it from fraying. Okay, I also got from them my lettering. Now I ordered a three millimeter and a two millimeter lettering, and that two millimeter <laughs> that is some small lettering. All right, so here's my three millimeter. Let me put this on here, and it's 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 hard to see, and I believe this is what I'm going to go with. What I done was I painted a, a little stick here black. All right. I will put the name Blue Nose on here and then cut it off to the proper size and that will go up there near the bow of my ship. Now, you're saying, wait, 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 that's supposed to be yellow. I, I, you know what, since I'm not doing that design on the front of the ship in yellow, I thought, why would I want a red and black and white ship and then all of a sudden, boom, you got le yellow lettering. I know it's everybody uses yellow but I'm gonna go with white lettering <coughs> so uh, that's my preference and uh, that's what I'm doing but this is like a uh, boy I don't, I don't know what to tell you what it is I don't know if it's a vinyl or what but it's a pick and stick this is not a decal and you cannot even see them letters They're, I'm gonna have trouble getting them off of there they, they give you a little warning to be careful trying to get them off but uh, you just pick them off, I guess, with a pair of tweezers or your knife, and then you just stick them on where you want them to go. They got like a sticky background to them. So that's what I'll be doing. I haven't got that far yet, but that's the plan. Okay. All right. So I think it's uh, it's time to get to the ship. So let me clear this stuff out of the way, and. Uh, Get my ship over here. Okay, so I went over to the uh, <clears throat> hobby store and got me some of this uh, black in it, it's called. Now, <clears throat> this particular brand here, the guy told me, uh, I, A West is, I guess, the company. But he says he thinks they're going out of business. So I probably got one of the last bottles from the hobby store there is. Okay. Now this says it will not work on aluminum or uh, stainless steel. So it's a good thing I went ahead and switched over my uh, turnbuckles to brass. So, but first of all we're going to try this out here on this... Uh, on these little rings that go up on my bow sprint. Now I got a empty dish here for this stuff and a little dish of water to rinse it off. And it does say this stuff's pretty nasty right there. So pay attention to that. So let's give this a try. Now this is the first time I've tried this so you're seeing it in real time and I don't think it takes a lot. And it says, do not get on your hands or in your eyes, or don't drink it. <coughs> All right, so here we go. It says it should take about 30 to 90 seconds. Now they do tell you to uh, clean your parts first. Uh, clean them in uh, lacquer thinner or something like that. Uh, and it also said 
avoid from scratching it. So I guess, you know, you don't want to sand on this uh, brass because it says that over time it will make it look like rust. So we're going to see what happens here. I can see something happening. I'm getting some brown liquid in there coming off of the uh, the parts. Now I was worried about this, what it would do to my uh, solder and it says it will blacken solder too so we're going to find out here. We're going to let it set for a few seconds. I'll tell you what I'll throw one or two of these little turnbuckles in there too. See what happens to them. Those were some extra ones that I had. Uh, I believe I made about eight of them turnbuckles and I only needed two. Because like I said uh, earlier in the video I've made some other styles. I went and made the ones that they recommended and the ones that look like they were on the ship more than these. Okay, that was my original design that I was going with and uh, I'm probably only going to have a couple of them on there. Well, it's getting kind of murky in here kind of turning my uh, liquid kind of brownish color. Let me flip them over. Trying to flip them over but I can't. I don't see a whole lot happening. I mean it's it's darkening it up a little bit but not as much as I thought it would as fast as I've seen uh, other guys do this. Uh, while we're waiting on this I got a little thing here I want to show you. Um, this is two little samples I did about a month or so ago and I forgot about them. And uh, two little sticks here that I've got glued together with this uh, tight bond here. Okay. Didn't do nothing fancy to it. I just put some of that glue on there and uh, stuck these two sticks together. Now they've been sitting around here. I forgot about this little thing for about a month and a half. And now these other two sticks that are stuck together are with super glue, CA or whatever you guys want to call it. So I was going to try and do a little test here to see uh, which holds better, if there's any difference or anything. So here we go. Let's try the, uh, the one with the CA glue, the super glue first. Try and pull these apart. Just It just popped right apart nothing to it didn't hardly put any pressure on it at all and it just came right apart now let's see the wood glue oh boy I tell you what <laughs> now that I can't get a you know, I could get it apart but there it comes now that took some pressure that took some doing to pop them apart and you can see it did rip a little bit of the wood in there where uh, this really didn't do nothing to the wood. So I don't know what that proves. Um, the holding power of the wood glue with wood is much, much stronger than the super glue. Uh, over time, I don't know what, you know what would happen. But that's why I don't use a super glue too much on my wooden uh, on my wooden ship that I'm, I'm building here, the Blue Nose, because I don't think it's it's the proper product. And that's that's my opinion. <clears throat> I mean, for a fast job, you want to get something done, yeah, go ahead. But uh, to me that I had a hell of a time breaking that apart. No, I wouldn't say a hell of a time, but it was a lot stronger joint than that was. Probably three, four times stronger joint than that. And you can see I damaged, well, you probably can't see it, but I did damage a little bit of the wood there. 
All right, I think these parts have been soaking long enough now. Let's get them out of here and see what happened. Now, I'm going to dip them in this water solution here first. It, this, this water has really got nasty looking. You can see that? So there's no reusing it. So we're going to dip this in this water solution. Just plain old tap water to dry them off. Or to, or to rinse them off, I should say. I can't hardly see my other parts. Can't see down in there. There we go. Well, I can see right away that where the solder is, just when these sitting in this water, uh, it did not blacken the solder. Not at all. I'll tell you what, let me get my spectacles on here so I can see this a little better. Well, it, it more took, it, it took the solder and, uh, Turned it kind of brownish color like it's rusted. Okay. Let me rinse this off a little bit so we can get it up there. Now it says this stuff won't wipe off once it's on there. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too happy with this at all. Not real happy with this at all. Maybe if I let it soak longer. I don't know. Let me, I don't know if you can see this. Let me bring it up here real good and close. Let me find a good spot. Right here. I got my put my other glasses on. I don't know if that's gonna show up for you or not. But here's here's one of the rings that's been soldered on and uh, it's kind of a brownish color where the solder is instead of black and I still see uh, I still see some brass there like uh, like it hadn't been soaking in there long enough <coughs> so we're gonna dip it in there a little bit longer now let me really show you these here these um, turnbuckles get a hold of it. Let me take a good look at it. Yeah, it uh, really doesn't get that uh, solder real nice and black like I'm looking at there. It looks like it's gray. Now the brass, it, it turned it black. That's what I was looking for. But uh, the solder on this one, it, it just didn't look like it attacked it very much. Still kind of gray looking. We're going to put them all back in there for a little bit longer. All right. So I don't know if this is worth it or not. I think I'll probably wind up taking some uh, flat black and uh, painting these things up. At least on the ones on the bow sprint. Uh, the rest of them, uh, I don't know. I might be painting them silver. But uh, these ones on the bow sprint, I wanted to get them black. And there's that little dog. Come on, guys. They're, one of them's got a bone and the other one don't. So they're having a little fit. All right. So that's it for that little test. Uh, like I said, I don't know. If, I'm probably going to wind up painting these flat black. Uh, this cost me about 10 bucks for that. Uh, not real happy with the results. Maybe there's better stuff out there. I don't know. But, all right, that's it. Okay, I'm back. Um, here's a couple minutes later. I, I soaked them some more. And uh, 
you can see I'm not happy with the results so I will be painting these now there's a there is a one ring here <laughs> right over here on the side by itself and that's just plain brass now it did do that real good it, it blackened it like it should but uh, you can see them two turnbuckles there on the ends of them that's where I soldered them and it, it turned that solder more to a brownish color so I'm not happy with the results and uh, here is the liquid now there's the bottle real pretty blue and there's the liquid turned it kind of greenish color and you can see the stuff floating in the bottom of the jar or the little cup thing I got there uh, because when I seen a guy do this on the internet and he was working on ship models he was you know blackening parts for his ship uh, when he did it he had a different product and uh, when he was done dipping his for about oh half a minute to a minute at the most his liquid was still as clear as it was when he started out and he just poured it right back into the bottle well there's no way I'm dumping that back in that bottle so uh, you know it's up to you guys maybe there's another product out there I believe the product that he was using uh, was for stained glass windows but I mean this right here it, it says it's purposely made to blacken metals instantly blackens metal not for aluminum or stainless well that's brass brass and solder it even says on the directions it will blacken solder well it sure didn't okay well maybe I had to have a different type of solder you know I, I don't know what I got 60 40 or something like that but I'm not happy I'll be I'll be uh, painting all these little parts up on the bowsprit here with a flat black that's it test is over okay so here we are with the ship uh, got one more thing I want to show you uh, told you I was ordering them eye hooks and a couple other things from uh, Hobby Link and they had some dead eyes that were the teardrop shape dead eyes now these are a five millimeter the lower dead eyes are a four millimeter but I figured they would work okay so I ordered me some now you need I believe 16 of these well guess what that's two packs I got one pack of eight the other pack is on back order and then I get a note from them an email from them and it says that they have been discontinued so here I am with half the dead eyes that I need and uh, can't get them and they were from this model ship maker if you know what that symbol stands for now, I can't pronounce the name Arstenia I don't know what it is but that's why I went to Hobby Link because you can order parts from this model maker or from Constructo which is what my bounty was and uh, that's where I got the uh, little dead eyes from uh, the Constructo thing but uh, so here I am sitting here with eight dead eyes and I need 16 and they're telling me they've been discontinued and the reason I went with these is because they are real nice they're all rounded on the edges and they got that groove cut in it around it around the edge of it but that was a waste okay and I can't believe that they're discontinuing them I don't know what Hobby Link's deal is alright so here's the ship uh, like I said it's 99.9% uh, .9 finished on the deck uh, I have only one way to go and that is up so uh, I'm gonna work on these ships these little dinghies a little bit more and uh, then I think I'll probably do my finish up my bow sprint and then it's to the mast and I need to clear the desk because 
every time I spin this around, I'm hitting something in the back back here. And uh, so I need to clear this desk off pretty good because once it comes to that mass, I'll be spinning this thing quite often. All right, so everything's glued down. Everything's ready to go. And uh, let me show you this little part back here. There's a, there's a little block of wood back here on the deck right here. And what that's for is to hold this thing, to hold this little piece right here. Okay? That holds the boom. Well, this will not be on my ship. Okay, it straddles that little thing and it probably won't fit on there now since I painted that little piece of wood. But it sits on there like that to hold that boom. Well, if you got this under full sail, this is not on your ship or it's not being used so that won't go on there uh, I got that little post in like I was talking I had to do uh, what else did I do okay I showed you uh, well here let's go with this that chain that I bought that I talked about let me bring it up here to you can you see it in there right in here let me see I it's kind of hard to look at that little screen up there and see what you're seeing that I'm seeing but it's right in there that little like a bicycle chain type of thing and I got that little wire on that I talked about I had to put on up there okay and I got that other little piece on up here by the bow sprint right there now I talked about I didn't like that uh, darkening stuff so I went ahead and put all my fittings on the end of the bow sprint and I got them painted flat black I also have that little piece that goes on here I showed you in the last video got that painted flat black with two little nails in it so let me see if I can how I can do this so you can see this better and hold this piece of white paper behind it okay you see all that up there on the bow so my brow sprint is finished just needs to be all wired up and uh, run my lines or whatever so there we go with that I hope that's showing up with the light the way it's, it is okay So that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, oh, let me tell you something. Don't make the mistake I made. <laughs> uh, I kind of, you know, like I said, I was doing my thing, just going along. And all of a sudden, after I got all this stuff on the deck, I realized, oh, wait a minute. I've got little... Uh, eye hooks with uh, little loops on them here little rings on them all up and down the side of this deck <laughs> on these stanchions and I didn't have none of them on and let me tell you it, it, for, a, for most part it wasn't that bad I had uh, let me see I think there's one back here behind this box that I had trouble I couldn't drill a hole I had to use a dental tool to get a hole poked in there so I could put that uh, eye hook in there and I went along and got them all over wherever they went on the rail if you can see I also got my belay pins already in I believe I'm just going to leave them brass I don't think I'm going to mess with them <coughs> and like I said any place that there's an eye hook or any kind of metal that touches the deck it is flat black now these little ones up here on these hatches, I left them brass. And I, I might go ahead and put that extra little ring on there like they're calling for. They haven't decided yet. But uh, if I remember right, I think there's 54 eye hooks. Somewhere around 54 eye hooks that need to go into various places on this rail. Okay. Uh, 
in the side of the stanchions and, and, and all that. Now I had a little problem back here. They want a couple of these little eye hooks with the rings on them on this uh, rear section of the deck. And if you put it into the stanchion, well then the little ring that's attached to it was, uh, was touching the deck. It was laying on the deck. So what I had to do was I drilled into the side of the main rail and put it into the side of the main rail instead of the stanchion and that raised that ring up off of the deck. Oh, and here's my deck. I forgot to show you that with the one and a half stain on it. Alright. See if I can tilt it up for you. It darkened it up just a tad, just what I wanted. I didn't want it real dark and I didn't want to leave it natural. So I darkened it up just a little bit. It has just a little bit of sheen on it. I don't know, I might come along later and knock it down with a little steel wool. But uh, we'll see. And if it's showing up, you can see some of them cut marks that I put in where the boards were on the deck. If it's showing up. Alright. So that's my deck. Got it finished. And that was no big deal. You know, like I said, I glued everything down first. And then I just came along with a small brush. You know, and dipped it in that... Uh, urethane, that polyurethane, and it was no big deal. If you got it on this, it's the same stuff, so it didn't, it didn't hurt nothing. You just spread it around, and it was no, no problem at all getting that deck stained. Alright, and I tell you what, you really have to go over the plans to look for every one of these uh, locations of these eye hooks that they want. I found two of them that are back here in the back and they're actually on the uh, the transom where it slopes up I, I can see two back there and the plans actually looks like they're showing two more that's underneath of this I don't know what that's about I don't know what so I didn't put them in there so I don't you know I hope I got enough uh, I'll be finding out when I go to rig it if I got everything in the right place Alright, so that's it. Um, like I said, I am really pleased with the way this turned out up here though. With that little chain on there to give the illusion of a, uh, of a drive gear. Can you see it? Right there. I took a little doing trying to get it looped around them two gears and then cut it and epoxy it on there to where it wasn't all bunched up and everything but it came out halfway decent I was really pleased with that okay and like I said Hobby Lobby you know go to the jewelry department you can find these little rings here they even got barrels little barrels over there but they're way too out of proportion for this ship but uh, go into the dollhouse stuff you find little things over there uh, the jewelry department you will find all kinds of stuff um, the hobby department they got this wood strip wood and things um, the sewing department you can get your thread just you know I do a lot of my shopping over there but when it came to that black in it they looked at me like what what are you talking about so I had to go over to the hobby store to get that. Okay, I believe that's uh, enough for this one. Um, like I said, I think I'll, I'll uh, well, I'm going to get them little dinghies done. And then I'm going to work on that bow sprint up here. I think I'll go ahead and get this all tied off and all finished up. And then it's on to the mast. Uh, one more thing. Uh, before I sign off here, I, I made a mistake in my last video telling you something and I want to correct that. Um, and it has to do with this bow sprint. The way I said that I'm going to go ahead and rig mine up compared to what they were showing. Um, on the bow sprint, in the plans, they called for this ring on the end to only have 
three ears on it and like I said I put four and I had said in my last video how they were running these two lines to this second ring here on the bottom they were not what they want you to do is put a what they call a staple okay you look at the plans you'll see it's just a a piece of wire bent sort of similar to this okay similar to that that thing right there only smaller and they want you to put that up under here right around that location and then one of these lines ran to that and the second one ran to that well I eliminated that little staple and I'm I put an extra ring up here on the bottom okay and that's where I'm gonna run my two lines one from here and one from here and so I made a mistake when I told you in their plans they had both of these going to there and it don't and you can see my cigarette smoke so I just want to make that little correction all right I guarantee you that's it I'm done I forgot about that part and I wanted to get that in there all right thanks for watching see you in the next one